everybody. This is Bill Blakesley. I work with Shaw Science Partners and I'm putting this video together just to show some really cool um, uh, plugins that La Maison uh, did. It's been like a year but I hadn't really seen much talk on the base about these tools and I found them extremely useful. So I, I wanted to share uh, some of the really unique things I've been able to do with, with this. Uh, I'm not going to go through the installation because they go through that on their site very well. Uh, but once you do have it installed, it shows up here under properties, uh, the LM weight map tools. And there's several in here, but the one I use uh, predominantly is the proximity map. So I'm going to run through a very simple example here and then uh, bring up some later examples. Uh, it takes a long time to set some of these up, so I'm not going to go through all that. Uh, but I'll show you a simple example and then uh, show you kind of some of the more advanced um, ways I've been able to use this tool. So get your your basic sphere primitive here. We'll go with polygon mesh. And it's pretty simple to set up. You just go under properties, uh, the LM weight map tools, proximity map. I'm going to go ahead and lock this down. Then I need to add you can add uh, any kind of object, uh, but I typically use nulls. I set up the range of influence kind of representation with the rings. This kind of helps to know, uh, and I'll show you in a minute how I set that up to where the, the effect is taking place. So once I've got this null set up, uh, in the second property, uh, the tab for uh, the weight map tools, you just hit add connection and you can add many of these. I think it's up to 30. Um, and this has a factor which which uh, is kind of the strength of the effect. But in the first tab, this is your range of influence, if you will, almost like a proportional modeling type thing. So let's just make sure this is working. We go into weight map and we can see that there's a weight map applied to this object. And if I keep this on, I can scrub this back and forth and you can see the range of influence this, this thing is having. Now the great thing about these is they're, as with most things in XSI, you've got the green divot so you can you can animate or apply expressions uh, to these, which I typically do. So let's knock this down to say 5. I'm going to, since this is locked, I'm going to go ahead and select this this null and link with. So the handy thing about that, of course, is it pops up in my driving source without having to do anything digging. So, and I typically just link it to the scale in X, set my properties, and then say, okay, let's take it up to say 10, and scale my uh, null up to maybe 3. And typically I use uniform scaling, but I only need to really tie this to one of those axes to get it working. So again, of course, this dropped back down to 5. Let me take that back up to 10 and set relative values. So now as I scale this null down, you should see that number change. So it's going from 5 and it's it'll stop up towards 10. And of course you can edit this in the, um, the uh, uh, curve editor. So once that is done, now if I switch over to the weight map, by hitting W and I expand this up, you can see that um, this will grow over time. Now, so in essence, what we've got here is a dynamic weight map, which is really, really cool because there's a ton of features in Soft Image that use weight maps, but to this point, we're, we've been kind of stuck with static representations of those weight maps. So let's knock this down to one, pull this in. And I'll just throw a quick deformer. Uh, the first thing you need to think of is maybe a deformer using it in the render tree. And of course I can go in and put a push operator on this, take it up to one, and then connect to that weight map, just like you would a normal weight map, but this one just happens to be controlled by this null. So then I can move this guy around and we've got this dynamic push, which is really, uh, you, and you can take this into all kinds of areas. Now this is a very simple example. Uh, 
I'll show you in the next couple of examples um, many uh, ways I've been able to use these tools and, and you can use them in really bizarre ways to get cool effects. Now I'm in a science industry so we do a lot of medical and so we have a lot of you know amoeboid surfaces and that sort of thing so it comes in really handy for me but I think that uh, it, it will have a lot of um, uh, use for others as well. So I'm going to end this piece and then start up with another video for each of those other examples. Thanks.